Welcome to section 5.5. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about gas mixtures. So a very common mixture of gases that you're around every day is, of course, air. You guys can see that the contents of air is about 21% oxygen, a very tiny portion of carbon dioxide, so 0.04%. So if you guys are watching the news, you guys might be worried about climate change, and this is the number they're talking about. And although this number seems really tiny, it has a very huge impact. If not for this 0.03% to 0.04%, the Earth would literally be an ice ball rotating around the sun. It would be way too cold to be inhabitable by us humans. Even though it has a very small percentage, it has a very high impact. The majority of our atmosphere is nitrogen at 79%. Now, what I have on this chart is the air that you breathe in, so the air around you, and what you guys actually exhale. Now, if you guys want to just compare things, you guys use the oxygen in the air for your metabolism, and so you see the percentage of oxygen goes down. Carbon dioxide is raised, nitrogen stays fairly the same. And you guys can see other factors like when you breathe out, the biological mucus layers that are in contact with air, that goes ahead and adds water vapor as you exhale out. And you guys are tremendously good filters. So even if you have a very dusty atmosphere, it turns out if we were to ex examine the air that you breathe out, there's very little to no dust particles. What I want to focus in on this lecture is another major contribution Dalton made to chemistry, and that's going to be Dalton's law of partial pressure. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So let's have a container and say I put a red gas in this container. Now remember what the pressure is going to be due to, and that's going to be due to the impact of the gas molecules on the container walls. Now, if I take a green gas and I put it in a container with a similar volume, it is going to have its own pressure because it impacts the walls of our container. What I can do is I can combine these two gases into one container with the same volume. What I'll notice is that the total pressure is going to be equivalent to the pressure of the first gas plus the pressure of my second gas. And so what this means is if I have a pressure being applied separately by these two gases, if I put them together, their pressures are additive. So let's say those two gases were nitrogen and oxygen. If I wanted the total pressure, that would be the partial pressure of nitrogen plus the partial pressure of oxygen to give me the total pressure. Now, the take-home message that Dalton wants to impart on you is that nitrogen's partial pressure does not affect oxygen's partial pressure. And oxygen's partial pressure does not affect nitrogen's partial pressure. When these two gases are colliding against the wall, we are going to assume that they are not going to block each other's collision with the wall. So each of them will maintain their partial pressure. And that's why we can say that the total pressure is the sum of these partial pressures. They are not interfering with each other. Now, when we talk about partial pressures, it's a good idea to talk about concentration. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about another way to express concentration, and that is called the mole fraction. Mole fraction is abbreviated with the uppercase chi symbol. Now, mole fraction is going to equal the moles of what you're interested in over the sum of all the moles in your container. So, for example, if I wanted the mole fraction of A in this box, what I would do is I would count out the moles of A, and then I would go ahead and sum up the total number of moles A and B, and I would divide the moles of A by that. Similarly, we can do the same for the mole fraction of B. It would be the moles of B over the total moles. Now, what you should understand 
is that if you add up all the mole fractions in your container, it should equal one. In this case, there are only two things. So the mole fraction of A plus the mole fraction of B equals one. Now with this in hand, we can do a little bit of derivations. So we're gonna go ahead and start out with our gas law, PV equals NRT. Now remember, if I go ahead and have a gas and I am examining the gas, I have to put everything in terms of that one particular gas. So I'm gonna go ahead and rearrange PV equals NRT and I'm gonna put it in terms of the partial pressure of A and the partial pressure of B. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to take a look at. And the first is, I know the total pressure equals the partial pressure of A plus the partial pressure of B. And I know the mole fraction of A equals the moles of A divided by the moles of A plus the moles of B. And I can do the same thing with the mole fraction of B. It's the moles of B over the total moles. Now with this in hand, let's go ahead and start with this equation and see if we can derive a very useful equation. All right, so we're gonna start out with the mole fraction of A. And remember, PV equals NRT. And if I wanna go ahead and solve for N, I can divide both sides by RT and I get that N equals PV over RT. Now I'm gonna go ahead and substitute that in. But remember, when I use PV equals NRT, it is in respect to one of the gases. So for the top part of my equation, I'll write P of A, V of A, over R of A, T of A. And I'm gonna do the same on the bottom part of my equation, substituting for the moles of A. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the moles of B. It's gonna be the pressure of B times the volume of B divided by R of B, and the temperature of B. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the pressures. And what I'm gonna leave in parentheses is I'm gonna leave the volume divided by RT. Now you'll notice that I went ahead and dropped the A from this. And that's because remember, this is a mixture of gases. They're in the same container. So the volume's gonna be the same for both A and B. Because they're in contact with each other, the temperature is gonna be the same for A and B, and R is a constant and doesn't change for the gases. So it's gonna be the same for both of these. And I'm gonna do the same for the expression on the bottom, pulling out that V over RT from everything. Now what you guys can see is I can go ahead and cancel out a VRT from everything. This leaves me with the expression the partial pressure of A divided by the partial pressure of A plus the partial pressure of B. But what you guys will remember from the last slide is that the total pressure is equivalent to the partial pressure of A plus the partial pressure of B. So I can go ahead and substitute that in, putting it on the bottom, and then I get this expression for the mole fraction of A. Now I'll let you guys know that this is usually rearranged. It is usually written as that the partial pressure of A is going to equal the mole fraction of A times the total pressure. And this is the equation that I wanted to derive. So since we derived this expression, I can do the same if I went ahead and started with the mole fraction of B. I would have got that the partial pressure of B equals the mole fraction of B times the total pressure. In general, what we can say is that the partial pressure of something is going to equal the mole fraction times the total pressure. And this is the take home message from the slide. Now I'm not gonna ask you guys to derive things on an exam, but what I want you to see is where I'm getting these equations these equations will appear on your information sheet. You guys need to know what each one of these variables mean and how to use this equation. So let's go ahead and practice using that equation. Go ahead and do this quiz question and when you're done, mark the right answer. 
All right, gentle people, in this question, I'm asking you guys to be a natural gas scientist. And so if you tap into natural gases in the ground, what you will get out is a mixture of gases. And what we're after here is we are after propane gas, which is a valuable fuel used in many applications. So let's go ahead and start out with our base equation. I know that I want the partial pressure of one of my gases in this mixture. So if I figure out the mole fraction of that gas and times it by the total pressure, which I'm given, I can find the partial pressure of that gas. So in this case, we are after propane. So the first thing I want to do is get the mole fraction of propane. And that's going to be the moles of propane divided by the moles of methane plus the moles of ethane plus the moles of propane itself. So I'm going to go ahead and write all these values down. So propane was 0 0.116 ATMs. Methane was 8.24 ATMs. Ethane was going to be 0 0.421 ATMs. And propane again, 0 0.116 ATMs. You'll notice that all the ATMs are going to cancel out. And when you get a mole fraction, a mole fraction will be unitless. So in this case, I get 0 0.0132. So that's going to be my mole fraction. So I can go ahead and put that into this equation right here. So the partial pressure of propane is going to be the mole fraction of propane times the total pressure. We just figured out the mole fraction as 0 0.0132. We were given our total pressure as 1.37 ATMs. And so the partial pressure of propane is 0 0.0181 ATMs. All right, let's go ahead and talk about a slightly different problem. So this is a very popular type of problem. And that is you guys are gonna run a reaction and once you run that reaction, it's going to generate gas. The gas is going to be directed such that it fills an inverted beaker. So what happens here is that this beaker is going to be filled with water to the brim. As the gas bubbles get generated here, it is going to displace the water and the gas is going to get collected up on top. Now there's one complication with this type of experiment. And that is not only do you generate the gas, but water itself has a little bit of vapor to it. So when you collect things over a liquid, the liquid itself is going to evaporate a little bit and it is going to contribute to that gas volume. In this experiment, what we're doing is we're decomposing potassium chlorate. When we heat up potassium chlorate, it is going to generate oxygen gas. What we can do is look at example 5.8. So we're going to go ahead and get values associated with the decomposition of our potassium chlorate and the generation of oxygen gas. Now we're going to do this over water. They're going to tell us the contribution of water vapor in our collection flask, and they're going to give us other bits of data. What I want you guys to do is calculate the moles of potassium chlorate that was decomposed to generate that much oxygen. When you're done, go ahead and mark the correct answer. All right, gentle people, let's take a look at the information we are given. We're given volume, we're given pressure, we're given temperature. So this is a good candidate to use PV equals NRT. So like I mentioned before, we're gonna write PVNRT, and we're gonna go ahead and fill all of this out. Notice that we are given a lot of information on oxygen, so everything here has to be in respect with oxygen. So let's go ahead and fill this out. So the first thing is the pressure. Now what you guys will notice is I didn't say what the pressure of oxygen is. I said what the total pressure is. Now if you remember that picture, the total pressure 
is going to be the pressure of our water vapor plus the pressure of our oxygen gas. So we were given 754 torr as our total pressure. If I look at the data, it says that the vapor pressure here is 21 torr. And then I can go ahead and solve for pressure of oxygen. This happens to be 733 torr, but I really don't want to put things in terms of torr. I should convert to ATMs. So what I know is 733 torr, one ATM is equivalent to 760 torr. And so what I get out is 0.964 ATM. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. 0 0.964 ATMs as the pressure of oxygen gas. Now the volume is 650 milliliters. Again, I should watch my units. Instead of putting it in terms of milliliters, I'm going to divide by a thousand. So 650 milliliters is really 0 0.65 liters. Now, N is going to be the moles of oxygen. And so remember what I'm ultimately after. I'm after the moles of potassium chloride. So I really want to find the moles of oxygen so that I can calculate using my balanced equation, the moles of potassium chloride. So this is what we're solving for. Now, R is a constant. It's going to be 0 0.08206. And you'll notice this is part of the reason why I changed to ATMs and liters. And lastly, we have our temperature. And remember, our temperature was given as 22 degrees Celsius, but we want to go to Kelvin. So just add 273, and that gets us 295 Kelvin. All right, it looks like I'm ready to use PV equals NRT. So I'm going to go ahead and rearrange my PV equals NRT by dividing by RT because I want to find the moles of oxygen. So let's go ahead and plug in our value. We have a pressure of 0.964 ATMs. Our volume was 0.65 liters. Our R is a constant, so I can go ahead and make sure I put the units and double check that they will cancel out. And finally, our temperature was 295 Kelvin. If I do the math to this, I get that N equals 0 0.0259 moles of O2. But remember, I'm not done here. I'm not after the moles of O2. What I'm after is the moles of potassium chloride. So I got to use my mole fraction based on the chemical equation. And I will see that for every three moles of O2 that I generate, I need to decompose two moles of my potassium chloride. Doing that calculation out, I get 0 0.0173 moles of potassium chloride. All right, gentle people, I hope that made sense. And I hope you see how I try to tackle these problems out. Always make sure that you organize your data, make sure your units are canceling out, and make sure you guys are using the equation properly. And remember, Chem1A, to stay safe.